Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows. I'm up kind of late because I've been crunching away on a uh, game that I'm doing. But I have something to put out anyhow, so I'm just going to stay up late and put out a plugin anyway. This is called Studio 10. Or rather, there it is being called Studio 10. Here's what I did. I was trying to uh, develop the inverse of not just another dither. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the inverse of dither me timbers. Th this will this hangs together. This will all make sense. Um, the inverse of dither me timbers, which was a quantizer that dulls the sound down at the quietest levels. Uh, the opposite of that is uh, a dither that will brighten the sound at the quietest levels. And when I put out dither me timbers with noise shaping, you got to bear with me with all of this. I'll be showing it to you momentarily. Essentially, what I've got here is a plugin called Studio 10 that does three distinct word length reducers that go in the position of what a dither would be and they change the sound in interesting ways having to do with manipulating quantization. Now, Studio 10 manipulates quantization by choosing the brightest, sparkliest sounds that you can get out of those lowest level things. And noise shapes, meaning that the larger scale effects of having it in place are kind of smooth, softened, kind of silky quality. I call it Studio 10 because it sounds like expensive late 1970s recording studios. And Dither Me Timbers does literally the opposite. It takes the quietest sounds and applies a filter to them, dulls them, by choosing whichever quantization choice would make the result more dull. And then it gives the error from that through noise shaping to the rest of the sound. So it has a kind of sparkly, lively quality about it. And then lastly, I have gone and redesigned not just another dither, which does its thing through a Benford realness calculations. And by the same token, it decides whether to quantize up or down based on what is going to give the most statistically real seeming set of output data. But I should just show you. First, we'll put on some music. I've got a volume control here. So you can hear this, or I can turn it right down. And if we truncate this audio, you hear there's a kind of grindy noise going on. And this is the kind of sound you don't want. This noise is truncation noise. So what we normally do is add TPDF dither. And that is technically correct, and you can always do this. I've got multiple plugins to do that with. And you can also choose, uh, let's see, here is Paul dither. It does the same thing, but it's a little less roaring, and it's a little more bright. And it's all to avoid this. Now, what Studio Tan does, and also what not just another dither did earlier, is use different ways of choosing how to do that kind of calculation. And the result can sound kind of like this. That is Studio Tan making everything brighter way down there. This is Dither Me Timbers making everything darker way down here. And not just another dither. 
pretty much gets quiet and tries to hide. And I should mention, I've done a little work on just another, not just another dither. It is slightly altered from the last best version that I had, which is, uh, I had some difficulty getting the version in dither box to work as good as the standalone. So here is the standalone compared to Studio 10. What that was doing was keeping track of all the Benford Realness calculations and scaling them back very rapidly so that they would be in balance. And I found that if I voiced it in such a way that it doesn't scale the calculations back as fast, I can get the uh, noise floor there rather than being this bright obtrusive sound that kind of colors the noise as well. It's more broadband. Like there's a little more lows in there and that's part of the Benford Realness calculations operating. And it's not generating that hiss that the previous one did. This. Hear how it's got a bit of a hiss in there? And the hiss is minimized with that. Now, bear in mind that when we're listening to the very bottom of the noise floor, this is where these processors are at their worst. They are not technically dithers. They don't use random noise and they, well, put it this way, like Studio 10 and Dither Me Timbers are not trying to linearize the sound, they're effects. They are EQs, equalizers, that are happening way down at the bottom of the, the signal. And the noise shaping means that there are other effects, sort of the inverse of what they're doing down at the bottom of the signal that is coloring the rest of the sound, and in some ways coloring the sound quite, uh, I was going to say obtrusively. I'm not sure if it's obtrusive, but you'll notice. And dithers you're not supposed to be able to notice, but these you'll be able to notice. Certainly at 16-bit, maybe even at 24-bit, you'll get some of the character of that. And again, Studio 10 is going to kind of bring detail into the, it'll bring a little detail and it'll roll off some of the loudest transients in a very subtle way. So it sounds kind of like tapes in old school studio and stuff. I think some people are going to love the heck out of this one. Dither Me Timbers is the opposite. Dither Me Timbers will darken the quietest sounds, and I'm talking really quietest, like noise floor quietest, and that will cause uh, reverberation and ambience to feel farther away. And as a result, the details that come out kind of poke out forwards a little bit. So if you have um, music being played through these things, Studio 10 is going to make stuff sound kind of lush and more polished and maybe more just sort of pop and stuff. And everything is going to sound a little classier but perhaps without quite the edge, whereas Dither Me Timbers will give you more edge and personality and not have that sort of lush gloss kind of stuff. And then, not just another dither, gives you a more balanced, because it's not doing the EQing thing, and a natural kind of quality. And the changes that I've done in it will mean that rather than being the kind of like detailed bright airy quality it becomes more neutral it'll become less colored and have just what i was going to do because people have complained about me trying to show these things off down at the noise floor and nobody ever gets a chance to hear what it sounds like is this I'm going to turn this back up, or perhaps just turn off uh, pure gain here. And we're still listening. What we've been listening to is 8-bit. And I'm talking 8-bit turned way, way, way down until it's probably more like 1-bit. But what we're going to be listening to is the stream. And changing between different kinds of noise, word length reducers, 
at fully 8-bit rather than bottom of the noise floor 8-bit. And it'll sound kind of like this, all by itself. That's not too loud, I hope. And we'll start turning things on and off, like for instance, here's what truncation does to the sound. As you can hear, it's kind of grungy and a little flatter, whereas TPDF does a can plainly hear the amount of noise in there. Now here's what happens when we start manipulating the tone using a word length reducer. Here's Studio 10. It's bringing up some of that uh, sparkle to things. Notably the hat got a little louder. And this is still 8-bit, this is still very low level. If I change it to Dither Me Timbers, it's making that background noise a lot darker. The highs are just not there. The previous one was pulling all the highs out of the noise floor. And then lastly, if we change over to not just another dither, very quiet kind of silky and clean and stuff. And I'll compare that with the previous one. Remember how the old Not Just Another Dither was a little brighter? I'll show you that now. You can hear a little bit of glitter on there. And there's it's like the light is shining on it, but you don't necessarily always want that. It's almost like a change in the sound. So. This, the most recent version of Not Just Another Dither, is meant to color the sound of the mix as little as possible while handling whatever noise the truncation noise floor, the quantization, makes it have. So it's supposed to be just the same. In every respect. as it would be without it. And remember, this is 8-bit. This is super low res. As such, I think it works pretty well. And again, let's go back to Studio 10. Makes the low level brighter and the loud stuff uh, softer. And you can plainly hear the brightness right there all the glitter comes out. Whereas Dither Me Timbers, darker, darker details. So what we're gonna do now is turn off both of these bit shift gain plugins. And now all we've got is Studio 10 and Span. So if we set this to the 16-bit versions, Rather than blowing up the audio, we're going to be able to hear what it sounds like not at 8-bit, but at 16-bit. And this may or may not come through on YouTube, but uh, the idea is to be able to hear what it does. For just the hell of it, I can also allow 16-bit truncation to be here as well. So firstly, you're not hearing a loud rush of noise out of the truncation. Maybe you're hearing it flatten. Here is Studio 10 16-bit. Here is Dither Me Timber 16-bit. At this level, we start to hear the louder effects coming through the noise shaping. And lastly, not just another dither. Now 
Uh, let's see if we can hear the uh, other ones, the more tone shaping ones, coming through 16-bit. We may or may not be able to do that over YouTube. But Studio 10. Listen for details coming forward. Dither me timbers. Listen for kind of more energy and attitude. And lastly, I'll switch back and forth between Dither me timbers, 16 bit, and Studio Tan. Watch as watch as I do it. we've got some very small alterations in detail there and something that we can do I better be careful that I don't turn it on uh, under these circumstances or it will become horrible and go boom if I take this to say 16 will work from 16 bit so I'll add and subtract four bits of gain and we'll now hear what it sounds like at the 12-bit level, which will be audible, I believe. And let's start off again with uh, truncation. Here's truncation. Just a little bit rough there. In fact, you can almost hear 16-bit dither at roughly a 12-bit level. Here is Studio 10, set to Studio 10. I'm pretty sure I just heard the slight lighting up of the details there. That roads now we'll switch over to Dither Me Timbers. Back to Studio 10. Tonality just shifted. Dither Me Timbers. Lastly, not just another. That's the one that you'll go for if uh, the other two aren't doing what you want. Like the first two in these options, Studio 10 and Dither Me Timbers, are applying a kind of tone color using the fact that you've got to quantize to do it. You can't get around the quantizing if you're saving at 16 or 24 bit. So they're using the fact of the quantization to alter the sound in certain ways. And it's altering the sound in inverted ways, either making the quiet, the quietest details go darker or making the quietest details go brighter and then using noise shaping to apply the inverse of that to the main body of the sound. And pretty much these are, these are word length reducers. You know, the uh, uh, not just another dither in the newest version, the version that has the least um, brightness shift. Because again, as I said, we're set up for 12-bit here. If I go to not just another, well, actually, hang on. Here you can hear this as well. Uh, not just another dither, not just another CD. So this is Studio 10 as set to not just another dither. And this is the previous version. You can hear
here a slight increase in sort of detail and definition, which is a change. You don't necessarily want to change. So switch over to the one that has the least tonal shift. And of course, if you're really hardcore about that, you just go to TPDF dither and give up on trying to manipulate the fact of quantization in a way that is useful to you. But yeah, this is for people who are enjoying that kind of stuff, who are like, wow, that is an unusual dither that doesn't work like regular ones. And this is me putting the three most recent ones I've done into a single plugin so you don't have to bother with like distinct plugins for 16 versus 24 bit. And in fact, I'm even letting you pick between which one you like best on any given material. Now at the 24 bit level, you're really probably not going to hear a change and you're not supposed to be hearing a change. It's sort of dithering to that level is correct to do. So manipulating it in this way is uh, pretty darn safe to do at that 24 bit level. At the 16 bit level, you're more likely to hear alterations in the sound as a result of this and because there are three different distinct things, none of which are actually a technically correct linear dither, they're all tone colors of different kinds. You can switch between them and see if anything really suits you, like certain glossy stuff or, I don't know, opera singing or something where everything has to sound really posh and not obnoxious, strident, anything like that, you're going to want Studio 10. Studio 10 will suck all of the detail into the lowest levels and then smooth out some of the louder stuff. So everything sounds more classy that way. If you're doing things that shouldn't sound classy, because rather than seeming polished and refined, they should sound raw and emotive and aggressive, Dither Me Tempers is the one you want. And lastly, if neither one of those work and you're just looking to have the spatiality of the sound magnified to the fullest possible extent in a way that, you know, this holographic detail kind of thing where you can hear right into it, not just another dither in this most recent version is what you're going to want. And as you know, I do all of this work based uh, off of running a Patreon. So hopefully if this becomes the most handy thing for you when you start using it, then pretend that you paid $50 for it and jump on my Patreon. I'd appreciate that. You know, it's some times are hard sometimes. And as the Christmas season went around, there were a number of people who were like, boy, I'm glad the year's over. Now I don't have to pay Chris anymore. And my hope has always been that I can continue to make other plugins and still say, yeah, so jump on for another $50 for this following year, and I promise I'll continue to do cool stuff. And <laughs> I'm going to try to do cool stuff and hopefully not be crunching away and staying up far too late uh, too many times in a row. But for now, uh, it pleases me to get this plugin out. And I hope you like it. Thanks. Bye-bye.